This is Brent with Lackens Motorsports, and uh, this week's video we are starting on our second 428. Uh, this engine also is a um, outward appearing uh, correct. Did I say that right? Correct outward appearing, whatever. Um, build for a uh, Shelby Cobra replica, uh, a street street version and in the street cars they had 428s as, as well as 427s and those 428s were just uh, they were not cobra jets they were just um standard 428 engines they had um c6 aer heads and a police interceptor intake and um they uh they were placed inside cobras alongside the 427s so we are, um, I actually have a few photos of one engine that was pulled out of a Cobra. So that's what I went off of as far as color and the oil pan and, and everything else. So we have two builds that are for that purpose. And um, we, we finished one and we're uh, starting another one. And uh, this is for my customer in the Czech Republic. So uh, good morning to you if you're watching. Uh, this is a, a 428 block, and again, we have uh, coated king main bearings, and I had to have the crankshaft main journals um, adjusted to uh, give me the clearances that, that I need for that. So I have rechecked those. We're in good shape. The camshaft is in. Thrust plate is in. Bolts are torqued. Um, rear main seal is in, again, with the lip facing towards the front of the block. Uh, the crank is... A brand new SCAT 428 crankshaft and it has been internally balanced. So we are getting ready to uh, just lube up the bearings. All the clearances have been checked, so I'm going to get the bearings lubed up and the seal lubed up and uh, get the crankshaft in here and check some other things out. Uh, we are still waiting on piston rings. So we've um, got the pistons and the rods already hung. These are race tech pistons on Molnar rods. And uh, the piston rings were on back order, so we were waiting on those from Total Seal. Um, but uh, I had the weights for those rings, so I went ahead and had the crankshaft balanced. And and we are uh, we're going to do as much as we can today. We'll get the crankshaft in, um, get the cam degreed. Um, I don't need the rings to determine a, a top dead center, so we'll put the number one piston in. Um, by itself and get a top dead center and get the camshaft agreed. I uh, hope to get the timing set and the timing cover on. Maybe the balancer spacer and the balancer. So um, we'll do we'll do as much as we can today. All right, let's get started. All right, so we have our, our main bearings coated with uh, assembly lubricant. I just lost my bottle. Um, this is, is what I use uh, this is just what I'm using today. Um, it, it varies. It depends on what I can get off the shelf. Assembly lube is just that. It's uh, just lubricant um, to get you going until you can get the oil pump primed. And um, it's uh, it's not meant to stay on forever. But uh, this is Maxima. And an added bonus is it smells like cinnamon. So it at least has that going for it. Um, got all the bearings lubed up. Got rear main seal lubed up that's very important you do not want a dry seal on startup and um, that's one of the things why one of the reasons why I don't like to send short blocks out um, because guys will uh, inevitably wait a year or two before they finish the engine or get the engine in the car and the seals dry out and then um, they're looking at me for for why the rear main seals leaking but uh, get that lubed up and um, Get it lubed up and and uh, keep it lubed up as much as you can and get the engine fired up as, as quickly as you can all right so crank is going in now all right got a crank sitting in uh, just one quick note to point out um this oil slinger um when you're dealing with a new crankshaft go ahead and throw it in the block and roll it over and make sure that that slinger does not contact the block. That has been an issue with some scat cranks in the past. So uh, just double check that before you get too carried away. 
Um, let's see, I had something else I was going to point out. Oh, yeah. Uh, when you get to this point, uh, check your thrust clearance with this upper bearing shell in. Um, it's just a good pre-check. I've got seven thousandths on, on here, so I'm not tight on this one. And um, I'll obviously I'll check it again when the cap goes on and the, and the thrust is set. All right, so here's our rear main cap. Uh, bearing is lubricated. These are cleavite bearings. I, I misspoke in the last section, but uh, cleavite bearings are coated, calico coated. Uh, rear main seal is in, lip facing towards the front. Bearing is lubed. Uh, seal is lubed. They got just a little wipe of silicone on the rear cap faces and on the end of the seal. All right, so we got our crankshaft in. I've got a piston and a rod and a set and uh, upper bearing half in there just to establish true top dead center so I can get my degree wheel centered. Um, cam is already degreed, uh, came in within a degree or a degree and a half of uh, spec, so we will leave it there. And um, I'm on to uh, checking piston and valve clearance now. So we're gonna check that and check our geometry and then we can pull that piston and rod out of there and get the front end of the motor put on. Okay, just before we do piston the head, or I'm sorry, uh, piston the valve clearance, I wanna show um, where the piston is in relation to the deck surface. So we got our dual indicator bridge deck bridge and if I since the piston doesn't have a, a ring on it I can uh, manipulate the center of uh, the piston rock so we were at 10 above deck so I'm going to use a 50 thousandths fell pro gasket which will put me with a, a piston to head clearance of 40 thousandths, which is typically what I try to do, uh, plus or minus a, a few thousandths. Okay, so got our piston to valve clearance check. I've already got my stuff broken down, but um, here's our one piece laser cut shims, steel shims. This is a 60 thousandths shim. That's what it took to, to get the geometry uh, nailed in, and we got a nice little uh, 54 thousandths wide uh, pattern on near the center of the valves, valve stem. So we're in good shape there. And I'm gonna yank this head off and check our clay. And um, then we'll go on to the next step. Okay, so we got the results of our uh, piston to valve clearance check. I like using the actual springs and clay. That way I um, get a good radial clearance and uh, the, the real springs will give me a, um, an accurate indication of what's going on. Uh, some guys use a degree wheel and checking springs. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's your preference and if that's uh, what you're used to, then that's fine. But um, we're going to cut through, cut through our clay. And uh, we, got, we got plenty of radial plenty of radial on on this side on the exhaust valve but uh, I'm going to measure that and um, right here there's usually a, a tightest spot so we got one about 150 radial clearance on the intake side and about 16 miles on on the exhaust side 300 and then uh, if we check our depth, 265 on the intake side, 336 on the exhaust. So we're in good shape there. And um, while we wait on our piston rings to come in, I'll go ahead and get this piston rod assembly out and get the timing cover on. This is not going to be a mechanical fuel pump motor, so we don't need an eccentric. Um, so I'll put the timing cover on with a fuel pump block off plate after it's painted and uh, we'll be good to go. 
All right, so we're getting our timing cover on, and um, the tips that I have for doing this is just a very thin layer of um, silicone um, on the block, and then put your gasket on, and then just a very, another very, very thin layer of silicone on top of your gasket. Put your timing cover on. Um, I use this tool that centers the timing cover uh, on the crank snout. Um, I have seen some guys go by the pan rail, but that doesn't always prove to be correct. And I've also seen some guys use the balancer spacer uh, to center it, but what happens is the weight of the timing cover is, um, you know, pulling down and compressing the seal on the top side so you may not get a, a perfect center job that way. So I found this to be the best. Um, it just slides right in there, locate your timing cover, then you can get your bolts in and tighten them up. Oh, and don't forget, this timing cover bolt goes into the water jacket, so put some silicone on that guy. All right, so we are at the end of our time for this week. Uh, this is all I can do until piston rings come in. Got the uh, power bond harmonic balancer on. The pointer was off uh, about a degree, so I fixed that. Timing cover's on, crank is in, and ready to go. So all the heads are, uh, both heads are assembled, ready to bolt on. The intake is, is ready to bolt on. And um, as soon as those piston rings come in, then we'll make some good progress. Uh, please hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned for more videos. I just received a, a new build for a 302 tunnel port, uh, a very rare Ford engine. Uh, I've never seen one in person before, so I'm um, excited to, to get started on that. We're going to use um, a, a, a factory Boss 302 block and with a little bit of stroke, and um, we're going to get that going. So i uh, got many more <clears throat> FE builds coming up, small block Fords, uh, some other goodies coming up. So um, hit that subscribe button so you can uh, get the notification every time that uh, I put out a new video. All right, you guys have a good weekend. Take care.